Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at finding inverse functions. So first of all, an inverse function of a given function is another function in which if we looked at the composite function f of g of x, it would equal g of f of x and they would both just equal x. So that was discussed in a previous video. If you need to review that, those are what inverse functions are. Uh, what is the notation for the inverse of, of the function f? So I used f and g in my example, but really, if we are given a function f, we would use the notation f inverse of x. This represents the inverse function. And I know it's a little bit weird um, to see f to the negative 1. This is not the same thing. Not the same thing. Can't emphasize that enough. Not the same as 1 over f of x. This is not the same. No, 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 no. This just means the inverse function of f. So if f of x is x plus 2, the inverse function we would say is x minus 2. That's all it means. So we have our given function. This is the inverse of that given function. Okay, how do we verify inverse functions graphically? Graphically, the graphs are symmetric about the line y equals x. So y equals x, that's a, a straight line going up from left to right with a, a 45 degree angle. So it's basically just this. And if we see two it, uh, functions and they're symmetric about that line, then they are inverse functions. So for example, here are two functions. They pass the horizontal line test, so that means each of them have an inverse function too. And if we were to draw this line here, you know what, I don't have to draw that line because there it is. So this is the line y equals x. And you can see these two uh, graphs, the gray and the blue, if we were to fold the paper over, well, I don't, this isn't a paper, I'm not gonna fold my computer, but you know, if you were to fold, print this out and fold the sheet of paper, they would be symmetric about that line y equals x. So the gray, function and the blue function are inverse functions of each other. And it's important to note, um, there are functions that do have inverses, they just might not be functions themselves. So we frequently talk about f of x equals x squared. f of x equals x squared is a parabola, it's face up, it looks like this. It does not have an inverse function, but it does have an inverse. And its inverse would be like this. And that's going to be a little bit harder to see. I'm not going to go much more into detail about that. But it does, in fact, have an inverse. It's just this is not an, a function. It fails the vertical line test. Um, what sometimes we do for something like parabolas that don't have inverse functions is we might just look at a piece that would have an inverse function. So we might only look at 0 to 2, let's say. And if we just look at this piece here, there would be an inverse function to go with that. So. That's not to say we can't do anything with, with quadratics or anything that doesn't have an inverse function itself. We can either just look at the inverse or we can look at just a fraction or a piece of the graph that would have an inverse function. Okay, how do you verify inverse functions algebraically? So algebraically, oh, I mentioned this already. <laughs> the composite functions f of g of x equals f, g of f of x, which equals x. That would mean that these two functions, f and g, are inverses of each other. So these would be inverse functions. Because, and you have to check um, both f of g of x and g of f of x, because there's like one out of the infinitely many examples of functions uh, where it turns out that you don't actually end up, you, one way it does work and one way it doesn't work. So it's very rare that if you check f of g of x and you end up with x. Very rare that if you check g of f of x, you don't end up with x, but it can happen, so you are supposed to check both. The good news is checking composite functions is so fun, so it's worth it. Okay, how do you find an inverse function if you're given the function y equals f of x? So uh, just in various forms, if you're given a set of ordered pairs, so if you're given x1, y1, and x2, y2, and x3, y3, and whatever, dot, dot, dot. So if we're given a set of ordered pairs, what we would do to find the inverse is we would switch each ordered pair. So f inverse of x, because we're not get in the habit of using the correct notation, 
would be y1 x1, y2 x2, y3 x3, and so on. If we're given an equation, so if we're given, uh, let's just say f of x equals 2x plus 3, because this can be really weird to describe this otherwise, what we would do first is if the function has a name such as like here it's called f, the first thing we want to do is rewrite f of x as y or whatever the function name is. So we're going to say y equals 2x plus 3. That's still the given equation. We just change the function name to y. For the inverse, what we do is swap x and y. So the inverse would be given by switch x and y. x equals 2y plus 3. The thing is, you want to get the inverse back into function form. So you want to now get y by itself. So that way you can use the correct notation f inverse of x. So once you're here, you want to solve for y. Then uh, uh, s replace y. I'm going to say switch. Oops, except I forgot to see. Switch y for f inverse of x or whatever the function name was. And if you're given a graph, if you're given a graph, uh, what I would suggest doing if there's certain uh, pieces that really stand out, like endpoints or something, just find a few points and then switch their x and y values. So my suggestion would be find a few points. You know, if there's key points, use those key points. Find a few points and switch. I don't know why I keep spelling this wrong. That's weird. See in there. Switch. The coordinates. So that would be x, y to y, x for each. And notice that when we switch, we don't change the signs or anything. If x is positive, when you put it in the y coordinate position, it's going to stay positive and, and ditto for negative. Okay, so let's find the inverse of each of these functions. The inverse function, excuse me. We would say g inverse of x. So remember, with ordered pairs, we're switching just the x and y's. So 3, 2, the inverse would be 2, 3. 4, 4, the inverse would be, oh, well, 4, 4. Uh, negative 1, 9, that would be 9, negative 1. So notice the negatives stay where they are. If it's, I'm sorry, they stay with the number that they belong to. 1 is negative in g. When it moves to the y position, it still is negative. And then this would be negative 5, negative 7. This time we're given an equation. So remember with the equation, we're first going to take the given equation and replace f of x with y. So we're going to say y equals x plus 5. Now the inverse is when we switch x and y. So this would be x equals y plus 5. Now we want to solve for y, so we would subtract 5 from both sides. That would be x minus 5 equals y. Now that y is by itself, um, I'm also going to use the commutative property to say y equals x minus 5, and then we would go back, since I have all this room over here, I'm going to say f inverse of x, so the inverse function of x, of f, excuse me, is given by x minus 5. And in this example, we're given a graph, we have f of x right here. So again, my suggestion is just take a, the, the key points, and the key points here would be the two endpoints, and then the point where it kind of, it almost looks like part of a piecewise function here. So here we have negative 5, negative 2. This point is negative 4, 1. And this point is 2, 2. So to find the inverse, let's call this f inverse of x, we're going to switch each ordered pair. So the inverse of negative 5, negative 2 would be negative 2, negative 5 down here. This is negative 2, negative 5. Negative 4, 1, its inverse would be 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4, and 2, 2, its inverse is 2, 2. And then we want to use nice straight edge, although I don't have one, so bear with me here. Oh, this one's going to be hard. Whoa, something like that. And if we were to put these on the same plane, well, they both fit here, so negative 5, negative 2, negative 4, 1, and 2, 2. If you look at these, you can see the symmetry about that line y equals x, right? You can see that nice symmetry. But this was the given function, so I'm going to erase it again. This would be our inverse function right there. And that's it for inverse functions. I hope you found this helpful.